to Civil War Digital Digest. I'm Will. Well, I'm excited to be back in Kenosha, Wisconsin with my friend Doug Dahman again. And Doug is going to help us start a new effort in Civil War Digital Digest. And this is an effort to help museum professionals share more with you. We're going to call this series Out of the Vault. It's going to feature pieces out of museums and out of private collections that have a great story, but don't quite have a place to be shown. Doug, talk to me about what we're going to look at today yeah. here and elsewhere. Well, we're a museum that, that looks at the Civil War through the lens of the Upper Midwest. And one of uh, the series of artifacts that we have that are on display, per, uh, you know, sometimes, <laughs> a lot of times they spend some time in storage, are a series of commission documents that promoted George Thomas through the ranks of the United States Army and then also the Federal Union Army when he was promoted in 1861 in 1862. Well, let me stop you for a minute yeah. there, Doug. George Thomas, anybody who does a quick Wikipedia run is gonna see he's born and raised in Virginia and his story is a Virginian who stays loyal to the oath of allegiance he took to the Constitution. Correct. Four great documents right. here in Wisconsin. True. Tell me that story. Yeah, well, I think one of the end runs around that commander in the Army of the Cumberland, certainly not a large number of men in under his command would have been from the upper Midwest. But really how they became part of our collection has to do with a local four-year institution known as Carthage College. Now Carthage College is here in Kenosha and its campus has been in town since the early 1960s. But Carthage College's roots really go back to central Illinois prior to the Civil War. Um, it was known as Illinois State University. Lincoln's own son, Robert, is an alumni of the said institution, as was one of his secretaries, John Hay. Carthage College acquired a huge collection of Civil War items from a private collector. His name was Frank Palumbo. Frank Palumbo donated his collection to Carthage College when it was in Illinois. And when the institution moved to Kenosha, the collection came with it. So fast forward to the 21st century. Our uh, mayor and our director are considering this idea to have a Civil War museum in Kenosha, Wisconsin. They approached Carthage and said, would you be interested in having the museum interpret it um, in the context of the larger Civil War story and the upper Midwestern story? Carthage agreed. And the Palumbo collection came to our institution and really became the nucleus um, of our museum collection. Frank Palumbo was a, a, a big admirer. He authored a book on Thomas. And so portions of his collection, i.e. these uh, four commission documents, became part of our collection. And I should say, for curatorial safety of the documents, we only have the space to have one out at a time, but yeah. we'll have all three you'll see shots of here. Walk me through these documents. Sure. Who, of course, I'll see George Thomas's name. Mm -hmm. Who else's names and signatures would sure. I find here and why? Yeah, well, in the pre-war ones, you're gonna see uh, Secretary of War Jefferson Davis uh, ascribing his name to those commissions, promoting Thomas to Major when he served in an artillery unit and then also to uh, the 2nd Cavalry as he was promoted. Later on, of course, Secretary of War Stanton affixes his name to the commission to Major General in 1862. And we also have Abraham Lincoln's signature on two of the four, the ones that were done in 1861 and 1862. And prior to that, Franklin Pierce as Correct. president at that point yeah. in time. A, a wonderful piece of pre-Civil War history, looking at Thomas's career, a contemporary or roommate of William Tecumseh Sherman at West Point, serving in the Seminole Wars in, in Florida as a young lieutenant. It's really a, a study of his career and how he progressed through the Army. And then, as you said earlier, a Virginian who decided to uh, honor his oath of allegiance to the Federal Army really uh, sacrificed his relationship with his own sisters. The story goes that they turned his picture against the wall and would not speak of him throughout the remainder of the war. Really kind of a sad story uh, the, from on the familial end. but. These documents really help drive the story of Thomas and his career in the Federal Army. We're really thankful that we have them here. I mean, I think it's, a, it's an amazing piece from someone who's generally considered to be one of the top two, three generals in the Union Army. That's up for debate, of course, but um, 
you know, that's how I think of him personally. Great. Well, it's wonderful, and I know you're able to show one as we show pictures of it in the museum here, but to get into the vault a little bit and into this wonderful library space and get to see the other three, it just, thanks for bringing us on this ride. Sure. Well, I hope this is the first of a series that we can share even more interesting things that we have um, with you and, and your, uh, your viewers. Great. And we want to say thanks to you for watching with us today. And thanks to the CWDD Coffee Grinders, the patrons whose financial support makes traveling to places like this and giving other museum professionals a chance to tell even more stories possible. We'll see you next time.